Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. I hope everyone is well, inshallah. So this is a short series that I've been planning on doing for a while. Um, but in the desire to make this more substantial um, and more dense, if you like, I delayed it. However, just seeing how many Muslims are struggling with this, especially young Muslims. You know, I have questions, have doubts, are losing their way. Uh, parents are affected. They are extremely worried about their children, especially as they go through high school and university. And quite frankly, hearing some absolute horror stories. You know, I felt that I should put something out, um, maybe a summarized version, and that's what we're going to do here, a summarized version of this series which is to do with young Muslims. And that's why I've titled it, A Young Muslim's Guide to a Godless World. And aside from this, obviously I have children myself and as they're growing, you know, I have a, a daughter that's six and a son that's two and a half now. Um, and the fact that they're growing up in this world, you know, I sat down and I really thought about what would be the core concepts and ideas that I would want to teach them so that they could function in this world, uh, live in this world, whilst at the same time be strong practicing Muslims who not only benefit themselves but have the ability and the knowledge to potentially benefit others too. That's the thinking behind this uh, series if you like. Now, inshallah, in the future I may do more of a comprehensive one, but I just want to put something out there where, you know, if someone that's young, a parent, parent that's worried about their young, you know, uh, children, teenagers, uh, going to school, going to university, you know, so they, some, I can give them something they could share with them uh, that would really help them to navigate the environment that they're in. So that being said, the very first part of this series is to do with concepts, right? I want to get concepts across to you. And two key concepts I want to highlight here to get us started is number one, worldviews, and number two, roots to knowledge. So what is a worldview? What is a worldview? Now, most people live their lives not even knowing what this term is, although every single human being has a worldview. Everyone has a lens through which they observe and understand reality. And I want to really break that down here so we can really understand the concept of a worldview and also therefore appreciate that in the world that we live in today that there are many worldviews. Everyone has a worldview. So the best way, the best sort of definition I want to give you guys, which I think is a good working definition that everyone can understand, is that a, a worldview, you can see it as a set of beliefs, a set of views. These could be axiomatic to do with the fundamental aspects of reality, right? That's, that's the way I would define it. It's a set of ideas and beliefs which are related directly to the fundamental nature of reality. Now, this acts as a rubric for human beings. This acts as a lens for human beings so they can therefore now go out and gain more knowledge and engage with the world and try to understand it. And this itself affects the way we perceive reality the way we engage with it and the way we understand it. Even what's referred to as the, you know, classically as the three acts of the mind, you know, that being understanding, judgment and reason, they are to a great extent influenced and affected by our worldviews. Now, let me give you guys an analogy to really uh, drive this point home about worldviews. Imagine for a second, and by the way, this is an analogy that we use in our GORAP DAO training course at IRA. But imagine for a second, we're all in a classroom or you guys are sitting in a classroom and I haven't yet come into the classroom. And in the classroom, there is this big white board on the wall, this huge white board. Now, all of you are wearing clear glasses, just like mine's right now, with clear lenses. Now, as you look at the white board, what color do you see? The obvious answer is you see white. You see the white board as a white board because you have a clear set of lenses through which you see the board. Now, imagine I walk into the room and I'm wearing blue tinted glasses. When I walk in and I look at the board, what color do I see? I see blue. Now, you can try to convince me that the board is white, but because I'm seeing blue, for me, it's blue. Now, imagine a third person comes in and they're wearing a red 
pair of glasses, glasses with red tints on them. What color do they see that whiteboard? Red. Now, people in this situation will continue to bicker with each other because they're seeing different things. Now, in our Go Rap Dower training course, we use this as a point to illustrate something else. And that point that we make, and I think it's important to mention it, is that, well, if you want someone to appreciate your perspective and the way you see reality, in this case, you see the whiteboard as white because you're wearing clear glasses, is what you do is you get them to, or you encourage them, for, even if it's momentarily, to take off their glasses and put on the clear pair of glasses. And therefore, then they will see white too. But the point I'm making here is that everyone has a different set of lenses. These are, you can say, your worldviews. Everyone has a worldview. Everyone has a different set of lenses through which they perceive reality, right? Now, the world that we live in today, there is a dominant lens. You know, you can say it's the lens of materialism, right? And that now links to many other isms and schisms which arise. And you can see why they're easily facilitated for because you're starting off with this materialistic lens. And this, generally speaking, is the idea, and I'll discuss this in, in future episodes, but this is generally the idea that, you know, there is nothing beyond the material world. It's all physical. It's all matter in motion. There is no supernatural. There is no creator. There is no uh, higher power or anything like this there, or, or any supernatural. It's all physical. It's all matter in motion. Um, now, this obviously links in with science, and I'll discuss science in a separate video. Uh, but this is the dominating worldview. This is the dominating worldview. Right now, just because it's the dominant worldview today, it doesn't now logically follow that it is the correct worldview or it's the correct way of perceiving reality or the correct set of lenses. And as Muslims, we also have a worldview. We also have a set of lenses through which we perceive and understand reality. And that is as a whole Islam. And this is exactly what I'm going to be discussing in the next video as to, okay, let's, let's analyze our worldview. What does our worldview tell us? What are the core concepts of our worldview? And we'll be discussing this in a lot more detail. Now that in a nutshell is a worldview. And by the way, every single human being has a worldview. You know, it's, a, it's the rubric through which we perceive and understand reality. You cannot do away with the worldview. No one can claim they don't have a worldview. You know, even the most self-idolizing atheist who says that I don't follow anything or anyone, I do what I want to do, you know, however, whatever they say, they still have a worldview. They still have a set of fundamental ideas, axioms, beliefs, about the fundamental nature of reality from which vantage point they then observe and understand the world around them and in most cases it's a materialistic type of foundational worldview that they are holding on to and this in a way ties in with roots to knowledge as well how do we gain knowledge about the world right now there are links between your worldview and you know the different tools we have at our disposal to understand and gain knowledge but what, we, what i want to focus on here is or get us to appreciate that there is not one route to knowledge again although we live in a world today which pushes and promotes a particular route to knowledge that doesn't mean that's the only route right and the predominant route to knowledge as you've probably guessed is empiricism the scientific method right which is proposed as being the best the most sound way of gaining knowledge about the world and this this fascination or this idea you can trace it back through history to the logical positivists you know they were the first i would say that really uh pushed this idea that you know um science the, what we gain through the scientific method is actual knowledge everything else just ignore it it's it's not uh, you shouldn't take it seriously it's it's not real knowledge and then obviously now you have the new atheists uh, who have come onto the scene and are literally, or many of the new atheists that hold on to naturalism as a fundamental underlying philosophy uh, or way of looking at the world, they are literally parroting the, the view of the logical positivists. Richard Dawkins is a brilliant example of this. You know, he, even if he, and I'm sure he's directly said this, even if he doesn't directly come out and say, science is the only way to truth. That's essentially what he's getting at. It's called, in other words, it's scientism. That's another term that's used to refer to this, this particular way of looking at uh, 
reality. And the problem is scientism is self-defeating. Scientism it, it refutes itself. Because if you take the idea that science is the only way to truth, take that claim. You know, this is a knowledge claim. Science is the only way to truth. Take this claim and now try to validate this scientifically. <laughs> you can't do it, right? It's impossible. And therefore, the claim in and of itself is false. If it's true, it's false, if you, if you like. Because you can't take that statement and stick it into a test tube and, and measure it. Right? It's, it's not a scientific claim. So it's a truth claim, it's a knowledge claim that doesn't have its roots in science. Then the question comes, you know, arises, well, where did you get it from? And this leads us to the appreciation that there must be other roots to knowledge. There must be other modes through which we gain knowledge. And they are, just to share some with you, testimony, authentic and valid testimony. You know, testimony is, an, is, is, a, is probably the most fundamental route to knowledge because if we think about science, science itself relies upon testimony. The most naturalistic scientist, and when I say naturalist or naturalistic scientist, the, word, the term naturalism, and I'll define it for you quickly here, it's basically the view that there is nothing beyond the physical. There is nothing beyond this physical material world, right? It's a closed physical system. Physical causes result in physical effects. There is nothing beyond it, right? It's, it's a very hard line uh, materialist perspective. And the point, so what I was getting at was that even the most hard line naturalistic atheist has to rely upon testimony. He has to rely upon the testimony of previous scientists, you know, based on the works that they've done. Now he may say, well, no, we have it all written down. They have passed on this information through text, but again, there is an element of testimony there. You know, there's an element of trust there. How do you know that what you're reading that's supposedly authored by a previous scientist is from that person, is based on real experiments and work that they did? What do you have to go by? Testimony. You have to accept, you know, that authority and that testimony from that perspective and, and say, well, yeah, it's, I'm believing it because I've been told this is the works of previous scientists. Even, you know, and we use this example, you know, um, Hamza uses this example that, look, most people, most sane people acknowledge and believe that their mother is their mother. Most naturalists, atheists believe that their mother is their mother, right? Their father is their father. Now, why do they believe this? They don't believe this because they have done a DNA test. Right? Well, because whenever you ask them this question, they say, well, I can do a DNA test. I can go and validate that you know, I, my mother is my mother. Well, yeah, sure, that's a potential. You can go and do a DNA test. But for the past 40, 50 years of your life, you have believed that your mother is your mother and your father is your father, not based on a potential, not based on a DNA test. That's something you can do. So why have you believed your mother is your mother and your father is your father? Why have you had this conviction? And the answer is, well, most likely it's based on testimony. The testimony of the mother, the testimony of the father, the testimony of the doctor. They may say, well, I have video evidence. My father filmed my birth. Well, how do you know that that baby that came out was you? You don't look like that child right now. Again, testimony. Someone told you that that baby in that video is you. So hopefully you, get, you guys are getting the point. The point is testimony, I would argue, is more, more probably the most fundamental and integral route to knowledge. And most atheists, naturalists rely upon it, right? Those proponents that say, no, science is the only valid route to knowledge and we can't take anything else seriously, when in reality they are, have to, they, are, they are bound to relying upon testimony. They cannot escape it. They cannot escape it. They may not want to acknowledge it. That's another thing, but they cannot escape it. Revelation from... Our perspective as Muslims, revelation is a route to knowledge, the greatest, you know, route to knowledge in many ways, because this is revelation from the Creator. This is revelation from God, and God is the all-knowing being. He knows everything. He is the all-powerful being, the most perfect being. So this is a the most fundamental route to knowledge for a Muslim. Now, how do we validate this? 
you know, we're going to deal with this in future episodes and I'm going to give you, you know, I'm going to point you towards certain resources where you can go and look these things up further as far as the evidences and, and so stuff are concerned. But right now, I want us to just appreciate what I'm trying to get is that there are many routes to knowledge, right? Many valid routes to knowledge that we all rely upon, even today, even the most staunch atheist relies upon, you know, which isn't, the, isn't science. Sure, we use science, we recognize science as a route to knowledge, but, and again, I'm going to do a specific video on the scientific method and, and in, in the future. But the point right now is, is that there are other routes to knowledge aside from science. You know, and we should acknowledge this. You know, the atheists should acknowledge this. And we need to understand this because this won't now pigeonhole us and, and put us in a sticky position where we get caught. Because if you don't know this and understand this, and someone leads you to believe that science is the only way to truth as a Muslim, then when it comes to your own faith, and the belief in Allah, you're going to stumble, right? Because you're going, to like, you're going to be at the position where, okay, science is the only route to knowledge. Science cannot directly prove or disprove God's existence. Therefore, I don't know if I can believe in God. So you can see how this is going to set you up. A false premise, the idea that sci science is the only way to truth, the only route to knowledge, this false premise is going to set you up to fall in the future. And therefore, you can appreciate why it's so important that we understand these concepts as Muslims, especially our children. You know, and I'm going to try my best to keep this or use simple, as simple of language as I can so we can all understand this, inshallah. Um, but those are the two things. To summarize now, what we've discussed is that there are many different worldviews. Everyone has a worldview. You can't do without a worldview. World Even as Muslims, we have a worldview. That is Islam. Secondly, that there are many routes to knowledge. Empiricism isn't the only route to knowledge, although that's what's being pushed by many people today. And that's the sort of social um, narrative that's being created. Um, and you know what? It's really interesting. If you look at the psychology here, what tends to happen in society is, is one way that the people that are trying to push narratives try to really drive the narrative home is to use a tool called ridicule. Right? They will ridicule you if you're not in line with the, the, the popular narrative, the zeitgeist of the time. They'll ridicule you. Ridicule is a very powerful tool. And then that will almost force you and compel you to align yourself like a sheep with everyone else. Right? But we should be confident as Muslims. We should realize, well, hold on a second. As, as Muslims, we're more interested in the truth of things uh, and being honest with these things. You know, we're not just going to follow like sheep just because you want to push a particular narrative for a particular agenda. No, let's be honest about these things, right? And hopefully I've sort of lifted some of the veils in regards to the roots to knowledge and worldviews in this specific session. Now, obviously, I'm going to keep referring to this book. And I really encourage you guys that are listening to this series to pick up this book, The Divine Reality, because Hamza goes into a lot more detail in regards to some of these topics. And it's a, it's a very, very good book to read to ground yourself again. Um, so, yeah. To summarize, hopefully we've understood and appreciated what worldviews are to an extent and we've appreciated and understood that there are many routes to knowledge um, and that science isn't the only route to knowledge. And like I said, you have empiricism, which is a valid route to knowledge and it's one we could use as Muslims when we use it within its right space. There's testimony, there's revelation that we can appreciate as Muslims. There's reason, you know, logic. You know, we can just reason. Uh, you know, use, we use syllogisms. You know, for example, John is a man, all men die, therefore John will die. Now, these are premises which lead to a, these are sound premises which lead to a sound conclusion. And we don't have to go out and experience these things. We can use what's in here to come to that conclusion, right? So we can reason. Reason itself is a route to knowledge. So go through this. Hopefully this is beneficial. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If there's anything I've missed in regards to these topics, please add it to the comment section below. And... In the next uh, episode, inshallah, we're going to be dealing with what I'm going to refer to as core concepts for Muslims. So we're going to be looking at our foundation, our tradition. What are the core concepts and ideas that we as Muslims in the 21st century, especially young Muslims, need to understand and come to terms with, inshallah. So until next time, take care. Assalamu alaikum.